An entity who masquerades as a young boy sets its sights on a teen. The boy came walking in. I looked at it like, oh, my nephew's here. I looked over and I realized no. It taunts and teases, and then it attacks. It changed form and it actually looked like a gargoyle. It had the claws. He had a really menacing grin, very sharp teeth. <laughs> Evil is the easiest way to put it. We expel you now, demon. I knew the battle had begun. Go on, do it. Can he be saved before it's too late? This demon was trying to take full possession of Nolan. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are open. Nightmares become reality. I was probably six when I realized that I see things that everybody else does not see. I would see things kind of dirt around or people just kind of standing there off to the side. Is it him? Is it Grandpa? Yeah. He could tell you anything about his great-grandpa. He'd gotten his arm caught in a corn picker when he was younger, and it was off just above the elbow, and he knew which arm. No one was a year old when he died. Come on, son. Help us pack the car. Sure, Mom. Jackie Lydolf doesn't question her 16-year-old son's gift. She has gifts of her own. Mine's more just the feeling. I don't necessarily see it, but I still have that feeling to know that there's something. I have strong instinct. The odd man out is Nolan's dad, Dennis. I wasn't a believer in anything paranormal. I kind of dismissed it. While he doesn't share his family's paranormal sensitivities. Did you grab that for me? He does play along when planning the annual family vacation. I think I may have found something in Branson you'd like to do. I asked Jackie, so you think Nolan would want to go on a ghost tour? And of course, I knew the answer to that. A ghost tour. <laughs> you know me well. The family heads off on a six-hour road trip from their home in Stockport, Iowa, to Branson, Missouri, driving through the Midwestern farming belt. Stockport is a really small town. It's basically all agricultural base. Growing up in a small town, you know, learn to enjoy this quietness that you do have whenever you know you're not harvesting or anything. And it's nice knowing that when you go somewhere that you will know someone. I'm glad you could join us. I'm Wesley Fox, and this is my wife, Melissa. I'm an author and a paranormal investigator, and I will be your tour guide for tonight. Branson has a rich history. In the mid-1800s, this was a lawless place until the vigilantes tamed it, and then the vigilantes became the criminals. Wesley and Melissa Fox of Branson Paranormal have been leading ghost tours in Branson for the past year. All the buildings on our tour, we have either investigated or through research, we found out that they are haunted. Several of the locations, though, we do have the evidence to back up that they are very haunted. In 1912, a fire destroyed most of the downtown. This building was built after the fire. When businesses moved in several years ago, they reported hearing scratching sounds and the sound of machinery coming from the basement. Nolan's gift draws him to a ghostly presence. I would see Nolan's eyes stray. So I would look and see where he was straying at and, and never failed. There was always something there. Follow me to the basement. 
Melissa, a psychic empath, can see her too. I've always called myself an empath. Most empaths can feel things, but not only can I feel them, I can sometimes see them if they want me to. Melissa and I actually both picked up on the same spirit. It was a very nice feeling because you have that confirmation, you know, that, oh, this is real, I'm seeing it. And that was really comforting to me. Follow me. Come all the way in. That's it. One of the buildings on our tour has a very rich history. The things that happened in this building have made it one of the most active haunts in Branson. In the 1920s, the KKK printed a hate-mongering newspaper right here in the basement. In the 1960s, a woman was murdered by a jealous lover at the building. It's no wonder that this is a hotbed of paranormal activity. On a regular basis, we hear knocking, scratching at this door. We've picked up voices on EVPs, electronic voice phenomenon. A lot of times, if you knock, something knocks back. Let's see if we hear anything. Well, folks, spirits will be spirits. I guess no one's answering the door tonight. Follow me. That location I don't like to go to. I've knocked on the door one time. The door pushed back at me. The feeling I got when the door pushed back was not good. There's something about that location that is just dark. Evil. Evil is the easiest way to, to put it. moving upstairs. I'm going to lock up. Thanks, Melissa. After Nolan was on the tour, people could go down there and knock on the door, and nothing happened. That location became dead, which before it was one of our most active locations. The Lydolf's vacation ends with Nolan returning to his sophomore year of high school and a horror movie date with his girlfriend, Angela. <laughs> oh my god, why are they just sitting there? Who does that? They know that nothing's going to happen. It's too early in the movie for that. we started noticing movements. They would get really close to us and then run away. And we looked over and you couldn't see anything. But we both swore that something had entered the room. <laughs> After returning from a ghost tour, 16-year-old Nolan and his girlfriend Angela sense a presence in his home. We both noticed something just kind of walk in in that light. It looked like kind of the outline of a, a child. It wasn't 
completely black. It had some color to it, but no facial features at all. Oh my God, what, what was that? While Angela has seen Nolan interact with spirits many times, this one feels different. She'd already gone through a few different things with me that were pretty unexplainable, and I think she was starting to get used to it. Well, should we be worried? No. No. Whatever that was, I don't think it means us any harm. For me, a spirit was a spirit. <laughs> I didn't think too much of it, and it didn't try to hurt me or anybody in the family, so it didn't bother me. Nolan returns home from basketball practice. Mom, I'm gonna grab a quick shower before dinner. Okay, dinner's on the table in 30. Got it. Tiger? Did you get stuck in the basement again? My room's in the basement. I heard a scraping noise. Tiger? And I thought, oh, one of the cats got down in the basement and were wanting back up. And I opened the door and there was nothing there. Tiger? So I went down and actually searched for the cat. There's no reason that that noise should have happened. I was in the shower, and I heard growling. And there was nothing there. Kind of wrote it off as an animal, like one of the dogs came in. And then it kind of dawned on me that I always lock the door to the bathroom, always have. So I was the only one in there. There's a back room that we use as storage. We put the decorations and everything into. I felt like there's something in there watching. It just felt really eerie down there. Branson, I've been sensing weird things. Really? Like what? When I was in the shower, I heard something. And that storage room is giving me the creeps. I talked about the back room and the feeling I got. There was something down there. I've never felt comfortable in that storage room. But this is different. What are you guys talking about over there? State secrets? Yes, we are, and you don't want to know these state secrets, trust me. Discussing the paranormal with Dennis, he just really never believed anything we was telling him, so most of the time we just didn't discuss that. It was just kind of, Nolan and I talked about it. Him and his mother talked about these things, 
uh, more amongst themselves, and they knew I didn't believe a lot in that. Nolan Lidoff has been seeing spirits for most of his life. But they have never hurt him. Something scratched my right arm all the way down the forearm. Nothing should have been in my room that could scratch me. I mean, I was fast asleep. It was just really insane because it was just I woke up to a burning sensation on my arm and there's just no explanation for it I realized it was more than just a spirit you know it had intentions it wants to cause me harm mom take a look at these the first time Nolan got scratched, and he didn't know where he got them. How'd you get those scratches? I don't know. I just asked him what he did, you know, whether he scratched himself in his sleep, or I wasn't sure what he had done. Wash it and put some disinfectant on it. OK. Trim your fingernails. I didn't do this. She wondered at first if maybe I had done it to myself. But I think it was obvious that I didn't. I heard my name called out, and it sounded like Dennis. And he was supposed to be at home at the time. Dennis? Dennis, is that you? think to yourself, am I just seeing things or is there, you know, was there something just went by or the wind blew or something and it's like there's really no rational explanations. Now concerned for their safety, Jackie discusses Nolan's unexplained physical attacks with his father. I'm worried, Dennis. During this time, Nolan would have scratch marks. And Jackie talked about how when I wasn't home, she would hear someone calling her name and thought it was me and go out and nobody's there. I don't know what this is all about, but he'll be OK. All of a sudden, I had scratches down my arm. Oh my God, Jackie. She had basically claw marks on her arm. Something is going on in this house. We need some help. Yes, we do. I try to rationalize everything, and there's just so much stuff going on that it can't be explained or rationalized. 
that's when he realized that we did actually have something going on, that it was physical. Not knowing where to turn, the family contacts the guides from the ghost tour, Melissa and Wesley Fox of Branson Paranormal. They were hearing growling sounds at their house. Um, Nolan and Jackie both had been scratched. And there's a scratching, especially in threes like theirs was, that was demonic. Wes explained that most of the time when it comes in a pair of threes, that it's demonic and that it's making fun of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's a mockery of it. Wesley gives instructions on how to bless the property and get rid of the demon. Three months pass by without any activity. It appears to have worked. My hope at that point was that everything was done, like it was just finally over with and that everything could go back to normal. boy came walking in hey and I looked at it like oh my nephew's here I looked over and I realized no it was just kind of a random kid had walked in the living room Sixteen-year-old Nolan Lydoff has interacted with ghosts since he was a little boy. But a gift that was once innocent and comforting has attracted unbridled evil. It changed form and it actually looked like, kind of like a gargoyle-like figure. It had the claws and it was all hunched up on the ceiling. And then it just kind of went straight up and through and disappeared. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like that. It was just so large and so close and so sudden. It just took me off guard. This was like the first moment where it ever went, this is what I look like. Here I am. This is what you're going against. It scared me. I wasn't ready for that. And I just kind of kept that in. I didn't tell anybody about that experience. Although Nolan decides to keep the terrifying experience to himself, his mother also has the ability to sense the presence is back. It wasn't the same feeling that the house had always had before. I knew it was there, but it never made itself seen to me. I mean, I just had the feeling. For the last few months, the Lidoffs have been in constant contact with Melissa and Wesley Fox of Branson Paranormal. Now the family asks them to come investigate the house. My first initial feeling when I walked into the house was very uncomfortable. You could cut the tension in the house with a knife. Not necessarily between the family members, but just in general, it was very tense feeling, very heavy, and you feel like you can't breathe. It's something that is not normal in a home. When we found out that the activity had not stopped at Nolan's family's house, we didn't know if the family maybe didn't do the blessing correctly or if it's just a very strong demon. It was definitely time for an investigation. Thanks for coming. We think that the demon is still here. We can feel it. Right, Nolan? Yeah. So the scratching sounds have continued. 
What about knocking sounds, growling? Where do you want to start? In the basement. There was actually one particular location in the house that was worse than all of the others. It was downstairs in the basement. It was by Nolan's bedroom. Um, Nolan's room was uncomfortable as well. But there was a little area of the basement that was very uncomfortable. I did not like to go back there. It was a sense of dread. Evil is the easiest way to, to put it. <laughs> what are you sensing? This is it. It was very much a hot spot in the basement. My theory on spots like that is that's where the demonics concentrate a lot of their time. Planning an attack, you know, it's kind of like where, where your home base is. But the demon doesn't stay in one place for long. I could feel the entity any time I would go into one room, it would run to another room. It was hiding. It did not want me to get a good look at it. I was outside looking at the trees, looking at the yard. There's one particular tree which I saw from the back of the house. The tree kind of creeped me out a little bit. After sensing a demonic presence, the Lydolf family invites paranormal investigators into their home. We think that the demon is still here. We can feel it. It did not want me to get a good look at it. It didn't want me to get a good feeling on it. It was like a gargoyle. He had a really menacing grin, lots of teeth, very sharp looking teeth. It frightened me. Are you okay? What's going on? I saw it. I saw the demon. Nolan is petrified. Could it be the same demon he's been seeing? I saw it a few days ago. It looked like a kid, and then it, 
it just, it turned into this, this hideous thing. Everything that I started to describe, Nolan could complete. It was because it was the same entity. The only difference is, is it showed him that it was a child first. It never showed me the child form. He would do that to try to make Nolan basically trust it at first. The theory was that it was just trying to intimidate and basically cause fear. But where did this demon come from? Suddenly, Melissa remembers when Nolan attended the ghost tour she and her husband led. Upstairs. It's a very good possibility that on the ghost tour that something followed Nolan home. Because Nolan is like a beacon of light. Whenever you have gifts, it draws entities to you. The next morning, the family performs a second blessing with Wesley and Melissa's help. I am a child of God. The Spirit of God is always with me. I am never alone. God's love we knew that it was demonic. There wasn't really a question or a doubt in our minds at that point. The hope was that this time, you know, with us there to make sure that the house blessing was done exact. All evil will leave my home. With every nook and cranny that most people don't think about, that it was completely done, that we could get everything completely out of the house. For I am peace, filled with God's love, and understanding that I am truly a child of God. Amen. If it's a very strong demon, it's not going to let go easily. So we have to do more things to help out. After they left, we all were pretty hopeful that this might be the last time that anything would happen. The house. I just had a warm warmer feeling about it and maybe a little brighter. They all agreed that what had been there was actually gone. And Melissa, before they left, she said, you know, she felt pretty good that it was gone. But as the weeks go by, Jackie begins to notice a change in Nolan. Nolan! Where'd you get that bruise? His bruises was more frequent. I mean, he had some scratches once in a while, but it was more of the bruising that he would have. Was it basketball practice? No. What do you care, anyway? Hey! I was concerned about his behavior and his mood, because he was more irritable, negative. He wasn't as happy like he always was before. It started becoming pretty common for me to only get an hour or two of sleep every night. According to my mother, I was getting moodier and more upset fairly quick. Kind of started distancing myself, basically, from everyone. One night, I started having a dream. And in this dream, I would actually find myself in that back storage room. I was looking down on my own body. I looked like I had killed myself. There was just blood on the walls, and I was just laying there motionless.
For more a haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. For weeks, Nolan Lydoff has suffered terrifying nightmares in which a demon tells him to kill himself. In this dream, it looked like I had killed myself in that back storage room. It happened once or twice in a week. And then it slowly became basically every time I would go to sleep, I would have that dream. Go on, do it. voices whisper in my ear telling me to kill myself and I don't know how to make it stop when Nolan told me that he was having these nightmares and it wanted him to kill himself I was scared that's when I talked to Wes Wesley Fox of Branson Paranormal has been advising the family on how to get rid of the demon Wes hi it's Jackie we're having some trouble here with Nolan. It's just getting worse. This thing is telling him to kill himself. I don't know what to do. Jackie told me about the voices that Nolan was hearing in his head, and these voices were encouraging him to kill himself. And I wasn't sure how much more Nolan was going to be able to take. We were concerned that this demon was trying to take full possession of Nolan. You want to what? OK. Thank you. Bye. I think the demon is attached to Nolan, not the house. And it's trying to possess him. I think he needs an exorcism. Is that safe? That sounds extreme. Do you want this thing to kill her son? No, of course not. I don't think we have a lot of other choices. You're supposed to be your family's protector. Once I realized what was actually happening, I told Jackie, I said, we'll get him down there, because they, they know what they need to do. Branson paranormal demonologist and ordained minister Joe Eder leads the exorcism. When I got the phone call that he was going to commit uh, suicide, we had to do an exorcism. This demonic entity had the strength to actually interact with his, his body. Before we begin, I'm going to baptize you. In the blood of Jesus, in the word of our Lord, you are now baptized. Let's begin. Baptism is a, is a cleansing of the spirit, and I, I believe the mind. We, the children, children of our, of our Lord, Lord, we pray, pray now. Now God steps in. We, we profess our lives to Jesus and our Lord. And a demon really can't attach on to anything. 
We are saved this day, this time, this hour. In Christ's name, be gone. Be gone. Good. We expel you now, demon. Demon, tell us your name. Demon, tell us your name. Come to God, Nolan. God is reaching out to you. God, your God is a joke. We, the children, the children of, of our Lord, Lord we, we pray, pray now. His whole appearance changed. At that point, we knew that Nolan was not there. We are saved this day, this time, this hour. No one's eyes were completely black. Tell us your name, demon. Not gonna say it. And the voice coming out wasn't his voice. Say your name. No. Say it. Exit time. Exit time. I command you in Jesus' name to leave this body and return to hell. Finally, the demon released its name. Within three seconds of him saying this name and Joe repeating it, you could see all the light in the room start to return slowly, just like someone had opened up a curtain and the sun was coming into the room. The next thing I remember is waking up and just feeling really drained. Wes was just kind of like, well, how are you feeling? And I'm like, I feel like I just went through a fight. It's kind of like he was waking up from a sleep, and he doesn't remember anything of it. I was very glad that it was over. With the nightmare of the demon behind them, the Lidoffs look forward to a new chapter in the family's life. You thinking about getting any training in Atlanta? No, not really. I mean, you hungry? I, yeah, <laughs> definitely. My mom, dad, and I just all kind of got, you know, closer as a unit. Breakfast afterwards. We're going to spend the night. We've got him back, and we're always there for him. If Nolan needs something, then I'll drop what I'm doing and do it. But uh, he doesn't ask a lot. I'll be serious about it. I'm just glad it ended up the way it ended up. There's things that happen that can't be explained. I'm not afraid anymore to bring up the paranormal to people. I'm more than willing to be open and, and let them know, you know, what our experience with it was. With everything that's gone on, we're still dealing with it. I mean, you can't get past it. It's just to be scared of something that you can't see, touch. There's nothing you can do. And that's the scary part of it. I still see family members and old family friends that have passed. I still see things all the time. I'm not going to stay in the upstairs. That's something I feel like I'll probably have for the rest of my life, and I'm OK with that. I consider it a blessing. When a dark secret is uncovered. I found witchcraft books. I found spell casting books. Stuff is creepy. Do you think he's really into this? And this necklace with the serpent around it. A family comes face to face with evil. I turn around. I see this girl standing there. She said, we're going to get you and kill you. Can they be saved? No way. Dad! He's fine. Dad, it's going to get you! Yeah before falling under its spell. I see this human shadow, and I was absolutely terrified. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see... Someone's in my room. ...and the things we fear... There are doors when they are opened. 
nightmares become reality. In March 2012, nursing home resident William Smith sits in a near catatonic state, oblivious to his surroundings. Hi, William. It's Amanda. When his relative, Amanda Morrison, comes for a visit, he doesn't appear to recognize her. William, he was a different kind of person in our family. He was uh, more recluse and kept to himself, and um, we didn't see him that much. He ended up having to go into a nursing home, and the diagnosis was Wynicke Korsakoff syndrome, which is swelling of the brain from uh, years of alcoholism. Here, I brought something to cheer you up. David made it for you. See? Amanda also has important news for William. So, uh, we're going to start working on your house next week. William's finances have bottomed out. To pay for his care, Amanda explains her family's plan to clear out his home and place it on the market. William? You do understand all this, right? William? You're hurting me. William, stop. Stop. Nurse! Are you right? While William's reaction is alarming, Amanda is determined to help him. A few weeks later, she, along with her husband Nate and two children, get to work on his home. Okay, guys, it's gonna be fun. We'll be like a team, we'll get to work together. Yes, we'll we will. Separate the jobs. William didn't have a lot of support from other members of the family. We had done a lot of work on our own house, so we felt that it wouldn't be too much of a project to take on the responsibility. Can I help paint? Of course you can, as long as you follow directions. David is very much a helper. He, he likes to do everything from fixing a toilet to painting. Aaliyah's not interested in fixing up things. She's very artistic. She was very super girly, happy-go-lucky. Hey, do you need an invite? Come on. Aaliyah. Let's go. Hey, what are you doing? Sorry. Come on, stop texting. Let's get out here. Kimberly wants to know if I can go to the mall. I don't know. I guess if you help with the house. OK. OK. But David better not get paint on me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my god. The house was visibly dark. All the windows were literally sealed shut, and then there were layers of old, dusty curtains closed over every single window. The walls were badly stained with nicotine from years of smoking. The carpets were filthy. Where do you begin? This is gross. I'm going to go back to the car. Uh, Aaliyah, come on now. We promised William that we were going to help. William's house is, like, dirty. There's stains. and. Just everything was gross and all over the place and unorganized. It was very gloomy and dark, and the walls were ripped up. These TVs don't even work. Honey, I guess just divide and conquer? Yeah, we'll clear a path back this way. OK. All right. We'll start here. Keep the box again. I thought, I can't give up. I can't stop what I signed up for. I can't stop helping him get all this done. I went into one really large box, and I found witchcraft books. I found spell casting books. Mm -hmm. 
and wrapped up in a cloth was this gold-colored necklace that was kind of heavy. It was a, a staff with the serpent around it, but it wasn't the medical symbol. It was definitely bad and not good. Nate? Nate, can you come here, Nate? Hey. Hey. Nate, look, look, look at this stuff. Look at these books. This stuff is creepy. Do you think he's really into this? Or was? Oh, you know what? Put it back in the box. Don't worry about it. No, what, what about this necklace? My husband's not like me. Everything's, like, logical. He thought it was a little bit weird, just, hmm, but he didn't think much of it because he's real rational. It's been a long day. I'm going to get the kids, and we'll just call it quits, all right? I know that William was a strange sort of guy, but they're just books. Okay. William. You're probably right. We're going to call it quits, OK? OK. All right. I'm going to turn the lights out. All right. You going to get David? Can we get some pizza on the way home? Sure. Over the next few months, Nate and Amanda renovate and clean the house. As it nears completion and is ready to be put up for sale, Amanda pays a visit to William. Hey, William. You're going to be so excited. We nearly finished the house. Look, I brought photos. The last time I went to visit William, I had brought photos of all the work that we did in an envelope, and I showed him how everything had been changed and how much better you know, certain things look. Look at this. Ta-da, fresh paint. He was interested at first and kind of leaning forward and squinting and looking. I hope you don't mind, but some of this stuff did go to Goodwill. His whole face changed. Look at this, we cleared all of that out. Yeah. You did this to me! What are, what are you talking about? He started to get meaner, and he said he blamed me because he ended up in a nursing home. You put me in here? Get out of my life. Get out of my house. You are elves. Get out. It really upset me that he would feel that way after everything that I did for him and pretty much broke my heart. At William. Nate is putting the finishing touches on the house before it's put up for sale. Amanda? Amanda had left, and I was at William's house in the middle of the day. I had a feeling that I was being watched.
As Nate Morrison prepares to sell the home of his wife's ill relative, he can't shake the feeling he's not alone. I turned around and saw a tall, shadowy figure. It looked like it was a human shape, only much taller and much darker. It was not friendly. completely stunned and I thought oh my god is my husband having a heart attack or something because he looked visibly white I saw something oh no what? it was this big uh, shadow and it was it was huge and it was shaped like a person okay what was it it was something okay look I, I I'm out of here I gotta go okay I gotta go we can leave it it's fine my husband's very analytical, and to see him scared, to know that he actually saw something, was very scary. Amanda and Nate leave the house in the hands of William's new guardian and resume their normal routine. To this day, they have no idea if it ever sold. Even though things didn't work out the way I had hoped with William, I had good intentions but I was very glad to be over with it. The responsibilities and obligations had been weighing on us. It was nice to not have a whole other house to take care of. But little do the Morrisons know, their ordeal yeah. is far from over. Eight-year-old David plays with a secret souvenir taken during William's house cleaning. I found this necklace with a snake around it. It had lots of scales. I thought it was really cool looking, and I thought I could show my friends. I wanted to keep it aware to the school. Hey, you still awake? Lights out, okay? It's a school night. I think something's wrong with David. Sweetie? Mom! What was, What's it wrong? Was, Calm down. What was it? Calm down. Calm down. It was a... Hey. Hey. He was, was crying or yelling, saying that he had a nightmare. I was very scared, but I can't really remember the details. I just knew that it felt very real to me. Sounds like it was just, just a bad dream. No, no, it was... I figured that if he wasn't remembering, it couldn't be that serious. And kids having nightmares is, is a fairly common thing. David, the last time you were in front of a campfire, 
You were in diapers. What was I? That's right. Over the next few weeks, while the family deals with David's recurring nightmares, they begin to notice something else. His sister, Aaliyah, is growing withdrawn. Aaliyah was a very bubbly, social, butterfly kind of child, and she started to pull away a little bit. Aaliyah, are you going to join us? Aaliyah. Can't you see that I'm busy? Whoa. God. Sorry. Just leave me alone. Ah. Uh. Aaliyah's parents are shocked by her behavior and hope it's temporary. We figured it was a phase that she would eventually move out of. But Aaliyah's anxiety only grows worse. When I was in my room, I felt like something was there. Felt like I was being watched. I didn't feel like myself. Something in my brain was telling me all this crazy stuff that I usually would never do. <laughs> like something that was trying to control me. Morrison has been worried about her 12-year-old daughter, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Sweetie, it's time to get up, OK? It's time for school. Aaliyah. Aaliyah? She was shaking and she was crying and she was very distressed. I knew it wasn't like a joke. She was like really, truly scared. I saw the words help me carved into her headboard. Oh my God. She started crying and she says, I don't even know why that just happened. It was like she blacked out. <laughs> we started to become more concerned that this was a more serious, major depression that she was going through. All right. Come on. Come on. Doctor, we're scared. Her parents meet with a psychiatrist who confirms Aaliyah is suffering from depression. This should help. So take this twice a day, and hopefully in a month or so, we should see a significant improvement. To have a child who's dealing with depression or some kind of affliction like this, it makes you feel completely powerless. Everything's going to be OK. It was hard when my mom and dad and my brother were worried about me because I felt like I was a bad person for making anyone upset. I can do this, I promise. In the months that follow, the family focuses their love and attention on Aaliyah. Oh, I got it. I think it looks nice. Yeah. You like it? Mm 
The room has a lot more color. It makes a big difference. Brighten things up a little bit. Since Aaliyah was feeling uncomfortable in her room and to give her a feeling of a fresh start, I decided I'm going to go buy some supplies and I'm going to change around her room. Now, if I could just get you to pick up your room. It's not dirty. It's just organized differently, Mom. Oh, Aaliyah. It's fine. I like everything where it is. Aaliyah. What? Did you take this? No, what is it? David! David, get in here right now! Yes? David, did you take this from William's house? I thought it was cool. Cool? You don't take things that don't belong to you. I've told you this. I'm sorry. As a mom, I was kind of upset that David would go into the boxes and just start, like, rifling through things that weren't his. I didn't think much of it. I decided to get rid of it. Months pass, and despite taking prescribed medication, Aaliyah's depression only deepens. It started to get to the point where she started to wear a lot of dark clothing, black clothing, like head to toe. The fear of possibly losing your child to something like this, we were very, very worried about her safety and how it was going to change her, how it was going to affect her, what we could do to make it stop. I felt like I was trapped from my depression. I was really scared. I thought I was going crazy. What? With no way out, Aaliyah becomes a prisoner of her dark thoughts. Aaliyah. It was like the middle of the night, and I started hearing my name called. But I thought, you know, it's just in my head. Thirteen-year-old Aaliyah Morrison has been plagued with anxiety and fear. I felt like a lot angrier, so I didn't talk to anyone. I just wanted to do nothing and just stay in my house. I thought I was going crazy. An evil force appears to be controlling her thoughts. I see this like girl standing there. 
she had black hair that was kind of covering her face. She was saying, like, we're going to get you and kill you. What is it? What did you see? Aaliyah came into the family room crying. She said there was a black shadow that rose up out of my floor and was right in front of my bed, and it said my name. She was really, truly scared. Where's your brother? David, David. What's going on? Come here, come here. Come here. Sit, with, sit with your mom here. Is she OK? No, Dad! He's fine. Dad, can okay. you get you? Amanda. What is all this? Come here, look at this. She's sketching all of these. Hey, what are we gonna do? I don't know. Our concern immediately was that these are hallucinations. And voices is a classic indication that she's developing a psychosis greater than what she was originally having. Amanda and I were very afraid that we were going to lose her. The family takes Aaliyah back to the psychiatrist. I've talked to Aaliyah for several hours, and I've determined that she does not have any type of schizophrenia or delusion. He was convinced that this was not a development of a new mental illness, but something that he couldn't explain. I do think that we should change her medicine as her depression is still severe. Then what is she seeing? I don't know, but I can tell you, she believes that she's seeing something in her room and her fear is very real. This was not a figment of her imagination or the product of an illness, but was an actual physical manifestation that she was seeing, and her fear was real. The whole mood in our house started changing. It was taking away our peace, and the amount of stress quadrupled. We did feel, as parents, that we were failing at times. We were doing everything that we could to help her and support her. It was putting a lot of wear and tear on our marriage, our family life. It wasn't a very good time.
da David? For months, Amanda Morrison didn't know what to believe when her husband and daughter claimed they were seeing an unexplainable, terrifying entity. Until now. I see this human shadow growing taller and taller. And I was absolutely terrified. Baby, baby. The things that my family had been experiencing weren't separate. They were all connected to this dark energy. That was like a time-changing moment right there. We really need to figure out what is going on. Not knowing where to turn, Amanda searches for someone who can perform a house blessing. She finds Samantha Harris of the Michigan Paranormal Research Association. I'm a demonologist, published author, and a paranormal investigator. Intuitively, I was picking up on a lot of heaviness. There was a lot of negativity in the home. It was really obvious that the Morrison family was experiencing some sort of strains and stressors in their family life. When I walked into Aaliyah's room, I was instantly hit with a heaviness. I could sense it very clearly that some sort of demonic or negative entity is actually in the room with me. It's here. What are you talking about? I believe there is a demonic presence in your home. I feel it the strongest here in Aaliyah's room. How did this happen? Is there some way that you could have brought it with you? Is there someone in your family um, involved with the occult or the dark arts? We recently found some things at a relative's. The more Amanda tells Samantha about the books and objects she uncovered inside her relative's home, the more convinced Samantha becomes that William was involved in satanic rituals. Amanda found this box that included um, a demonic sort of necklace. David actually took this necklace without telling anybody. I think that action released this demonic entity into their home. When Samantha told us that all of the bad, negative, dark stuff came from William's house, I felt like I unintentionally sabotaged my family. Like, I did something wrong. I felt guilt. Why is this thing after Aaliyah? Unfortunately, she's more at risk. It's really common for demonic entities to focus and target, actually, adolescents. Aaliyah is a perfect prime target. Basically, it's because of their energy. They're at a spiritual crossroads. 
this demonic entity really targeted her and I think was trying to will her to the dark side. We need to do a blessing immediately. Okay. okay. At this point, it was our last option. It was our last resort. Okay, we're going to pray now, and you can join in as you feel comfortable, and the only thing that's important is that you remain focused, okay? Okay. Okay. Samantha got everybody involved. It was a family activity to cleanse the house. Heavenly Spirit, I bow in praise and worship before you. I claim the protection of the light for my family, my finances, my home, my spirit, soul, and body. I surrender myself completely in every area of my life to you. I take a stand against all the workings of darkness and negativity. It really felt like my family and I were fighting to reclaim the house, and the prayer was a battle cry. Heavenly Spirit, I bow in worship the praise before you. I cover myself with the white light and protection of God. I looked up, and the light above our table was flickering. My finances, my home, my spirit, my soul, and body. Leo was kind of having a difficult time concentrating on this prayer and starting to feel ill. In every area of my life to you, I take a stand against all forces of darkness and negativity. As we were saying the prayer, I felt like the demon's telling me, like, don't say it, don't get rid of me. Heavenly Spirit, I bow and worship. The demonic entity was trying to distract her or to claim her back. I cover myself with the white light and protection of God. For more of haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. The Morrison family is attempting to spiritually clean their house of a demon that is after their 13-year-old daughter, Aaliyah. I claim the protection of the light for my family, my finances, my home, my spirit, my soul, and body. We knew that something was trying to get to Aaliyah and take control of her, and we were terrified. I command it to leave. Heavenly spirit, I bow and worship and praise before you. I cover myself with the white light against all the workings of darkness and negativity. Keep going. I cover myself with the white light. Paranormal investigator Samantha Harris urges Aaliyah to stay strong. Aaliyah, pray with me. Aaliyah, I worship and pray for back. But the demon keeps beckoning her to the dark side. The demonic entity was affecting Aaliyah kind of as its last chance to try to claim her back or to somehow have power over her. I said, no, I want my house back and I want to be able to sleep in my room at night. So I told like the demon in my head, no, just go away. After we were done with the prayer, it felt like a bunch of weight was lifted off. It's gone. I don't feel it anymore. Mom, it's gone. When the house cleansing was done, there was just a brighter feel, almost like, like we had cleaned the windows and more sunlight was coming in. We were all just kind of happier. It really did seem to, to make a difference right away. Thank you so much. You gave me my family back. That's the moment that I felt like I got her back. That's when I had my like exhale moment where I'm like, oh, 
it's really gone. We knew it was all over and all this demon stuff can go away and we can live a happy ending. Okay, um, it's your turn. To the left. Okay. Uh, there we go. That's some no. reaction. Oh, I thought he won. I thought it was over. <laughs> okay. We haven't had any okay, so paranormal turn. experiences since the house cleansing. Okay, so it's my turn. Do you have any aces? No, I don't. Go fish. It feels much more peaceful. David said that his nightmares have stopped. Okay, uh, ace, please. Yeah. Oh, he's Thank been you. waiting for that one. Yeah. My uh -huh. wife was happy now. Everything's good and back to normal. Mom, do you have a queen? Aaliyah is sleeping much better. She's sleeping in her room. She's not waking up and crying. I don't think I'll ever get over the experience. I think it's probably changed all of us. And to be scared of something like that, that you have no control over, you don't know what to do in that moment. It's still affecting me today. I guess in the back of my mind, I'm just praying to God that it just doesn't ever bother us again, you know? I'm still kind of on guard. I know now that there really is good and evil and that you can actually see it and it's something that can actually come into your home and bother you. Before all this happened, I didn't really believe in, like, demons or ghosts. Now I believe that if you let them, they'll just make your life miserable. You two are ganging up. Doggy dog world. As for William, who's dealing with black magic is believed to have conjured the demon in the first place, the Morrisons never saw him again. <laughs> Probably because it's his last one. It, it looks like, like something that. suspicious is happening right there. <laughs> ah, but, you know, I can see right through that card. Can you? I can't. I know. Aaliyah? Aaliyah? Sweetie? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. It's just something you can't really get over or forget. It'll still always be there. A young woman moves into the farmhouse of her dreams and soon finds out she has company. I always thought it was the old man that died there. How much fear can she take? I'm warning you, you're in danger. He's not happy. I was gonna be in my dream home and nothing was gonna stop me from being there. And how far will the entity go? There is something there, something that is not friendly. Before she finally gets the message. <laughs> In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see, someone's in my room. And the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In October of 2008, 24-year-old Jennifer Patterson prepares for a housewarming party in her new home. Ah. I knew I'd find you somewhere. It didn't take very long for me to know that this was the house that I wanted. The sale price was pretty attractive, but the charm that the house had was what was hook, line, and sinker. There are still items left in the house that belong to the previous owner. There were a lot of knickknacks and like old Christmas decorations and old encyclopedias left in the basement. Well, that's cute. I 
could find use for this. <sighs> the house was just adorable. It had wooden beams in the ceiling and it had this this brick on one of the walls and had big open windows, and it was just beautiful. I loved it. The house sits on five acres of land on the outskirts of Warsaw. The privacy of the house was really nice. I mean, the neighbor lived on the other side of a line of trees. You can go downtown and you would know everybody. There isn't a stranger in this town. Sarah is Jennifer's best friend. Me and Jen, we've known each other basically our entire lives. She's like my sister. There's no closer family you can get. I was so excited for her when she bought her house. This was really Jen's first step in becoming her own person. Well, I'm sorry it took me so long to get here. You live out in the middle of nowhere. But did you see the yard and all those huge trees? I love it. Just love it. Yeah, I saw the trees. I'm really glad you're happy. When I first walked into the house, it was one of those feelings that something was kind of off. So the dead flies come with the house? <sighs> Again? There was like 50 dead flies on the floor. They just keep appearing. And in the same spot, too. I don't know where they're coming from. Weird. Um, well, let's get a broom and we'll clean them up. Let's get this party started, shall we? Yeah? Excuse me, do I know you? No, you don't. I'm a friend of a friend. From the moment I came into this house, I had a feeling. There's a spirit here, and he wants you out of this house. You and everyone here are not welcome. What are you talking about? There's somebody in here that doesn't want us here? In my house? He told me he is a sensitive and there was a man and a woman in my house. The woman was just a dainty little lady, but the man was very angry. I'm warning you, you're in danger. He's not happy. Hey, Jen. Hey, you look like you've seen a ghost. Jen. Something really weird just happened. There was this creepy guy, and he was talking about how there's a spirit here, and he wore us out, and he just disappeared. What guy? Jen, what's going on with this place? That was when I started getting concerned. It's just one of those things that you can't ignore. 
Come on, Sarah, don't look at me that way. Hey, just some creepy guy. Probably somebody trying to play a prank on me. I just kind of blew him off. I mean, I didn't believe in that kind of stuff, really. Even if I had believed him, I wasn't going to go anywhere. I was going to be in my dream home, and nothing was going to stop me from being there. But Jennifer's new house is full of surprises. I got this huge, like, whiff of aftershave. And I thought that was kind of weird because there was nothing in the house that would have smelled like that. I looked in the cabinets. I looked even in the hall closet to see if this aftershave was left behind, and nothing. hear her talking. The voices were muffled, like somebody is having a conversation, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. Living by yourself in the middle of nowhere in a new house can be scary hearing any kind of noise. I kept telling myself, oh, you're tired. You've been working a lot. This is a new house. I just pretty much let it go at that point. Soon after Jennifer's housewarming party, she invites her friend Sarah over for dinner. Oh, come on, Sarah. One more glass. Uh, is this late already? I've really got to go home. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Uh-uh. You are staying right here. Because there is still some wine left in this bottle, and you are going to help me finish it. I really shouldn't, Jennifer. It's a long way back to my place. Don't be ridiculous. Just stay the night. I've got a guest bedroom. It's all set up and everything. But Sarah thinks the house may be haunted. I chose not to say anything because I didn't want to make a big deal or make something that it wasn't. OK, as long as a ghost don't keep me up. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Sure enough, Sarah is unable to sleep.
Jennifer? Hey, you awake? I went back into the hallway and I looked at all the doors. All the doors were shut. I could hear two separate sounding voices. It was just constant murmuring back and forth, like mumbling. You couldn't make out any specific words. I opened the door and it stopped and there's nobody in the bedroom at all. You just knew there was somebody watching you. The hairs on my arms were like alert. It freaked me out. Sarah warns Jennifer. That was when I started saying, you need to leave. Move out of that place. This place is haunted. I didn't really want to sugarcoat it for her because there were things going on. But Jennifer is too stubborn to take heed. One night. Jennifer works late at her job in the shipping department of a local auto parts company. So, I hear you living in Eli's old house. Shame what happened. Yeah. Did you know him? I don't think there's a man alive who loved his wife more. He was crazy about her. One of my coworkers actually knew the previous owner. According to the coworker, Eli Jones built the home for his wife, and they spent many happy years there. When she died, Eli was inconsolable. He eventually shut himself away from the world. It pretty much broke his heart when she went. Everything in the house reminded him of her, and he became a hermit. Then, the co-worker says, seven months before Jennifer moved in, Eli also died of natural causes in the house. I'll tell you one thing. That man could dress. He was always clean-shaven and always really loaded up on the aftershave. When I first found out that the previous owners had died in the house, I was really creeped out. But, I mean, there was nothing I could do. Eli, I'm home. I got another big whiff of aftershave. I am um, sorry about your wife. I, I know that you really loved her.
Hello? Jennifer has learned that the previous owner, Eli Jones, died in her house. Out. You can hear a man say, get out. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? I could feel the fingers around my leg. I had to tell myself that somebody died in this house. It could possibly be haunted. It's the moment of truth. Despite the fact that she was grabbed, Jennifer decides to make peace with Eli. He hasn't done anything to hurt me. He scared me, but I just kept telling myself it was him. So I figured he loved the house. He loved being there. He built it. He just wants to stay. I wasn't OK with it, but what was I going to do? It's not like you can just pick up and leave a house. You can't just do that. I just told myself, this is my house. I'm just going to have to ignore it. In 2011, Jennifer meets Sean Williams, a maintenance manager at work. It all started out with a friendship, and then it ended up involving into more. I feel very lucky that I met her. When the relationship grows serious, Jennifer invites him to live with her. Are you sure you're all right with this? Me moving in? Yes, of course. Sean has the biggest heart of anyone that I know. He would give you the shirt off his back. He could have a million things going on, and he would drop everything for me. I was super excited when Sean moved in with Jen, thinking that, well, maybe a male presence will help calm things down. Hey, are, are you sure that you're OK with all this? I mean. My crazy house and all the residual whatevers. <laughs> I'm not the least bit worried about that. I'm usually a man of science, and sometimes I thought well, what she was viewing wasn't exactly what really was happening. Misinterpretation. I think that his way of thinking was, I, I believe that something is happening to you but I gotta be able to debunk it somehow. I was coming home late from work and the front of the house has a big picture window and there's somebody standing there.
About this time, every time I we would go to bed, I would lock the bedroom door. Something, someone not being able to open my door freely was comforting. I'm trying to look into the darkness, and after my eyes had adjusted, I saw somebody standing there. For some time, Jennifer Patterson's haunted home has been quiet. But when her boyfriend Sean moves in, the ghost suddenly reappears. I could not speak. I couldn't even move a muscle to wake Sean up. There was nothing that I could do. In my head, I'm screaming, what the hell is that? Sean, please. Sean, help me. Help me. Help me. <laughs> Jennifer looked over at me, and all the blood was drained from her face. What is it? It's here. I didn't see anything. There was nothing around. You don't believe me, but I know what I saw, and it was him. Sean's reaction to what I had just seen was nothing happened. Your eyes were playing tricks on you. I knew what I saw. I still know what I saw, and there was nothing that he could say or do to make me change my mind. I saw somebody standing there. I saw him. He was standing right there. Are you sure it wasn't just a bad dream? You don't believe me, but I know what I saw, and it was him. She was definitely freaked out, but I'm trying to understand what's going on. Someone's seeing things, but you're not seeing them, so you don't know really what she can do to help. It's definitely frustrating. Days pass without incidents. But Jennifer grows increasingly anxious when she is in the house, alone. 
You're always on the edge of your seat, waiting for something to happen, waiting for something to scare you. I mean, you're supposed to be comfortable in your house. It literally sounded like something heavy fell or something slammed hard, like someone was breaking a door down. And that's the one I grabbed my 45. Someone's in the house. Stay here. Lock the door behind me. Don't move anymore until I get back. I looked around the room. I didn't see anything that could create the loud bang. you paranoid. Look at her ghost. My heart was racing. There was something there, something that is not friendly. <laughs> His girlfriend Jennifer grows fearful. Sean goes searching for ghosts in their home. I started off as a skeptic. Every time she was telling me something, when I looked around, I didn't see anything. When I went down into the basement, I sensed that something was definitely bad. It was a very intense feeling. Sean can no longer deny that the house is haunted. That was the first time that I believed that something paranormal was going on in this house. Knowing that Sean finally realized that what I was talking about was actually true, it was a big relief to me. But then again, he's saying it, so I'm not crazy, and what do we do? Jennifer and Sean decide they need help. She ended up doing some research and found a place locally that could get to the bottom of what was going on. I was hoping there was some way that this, these people would tell me that 
I could stay in my house, that they could get rid of whatever was in it. In July 2013, the Fort Wayne Shadow Chasers Paris sisters arrive at the farmhouse. We're an all-female team that um, investigates supernatural occurrences. Hi, I'm Tina, and this is Jackie, part of my team. Thank you so much for coming. My boyfriend is at work, otherwise he'd be here too, so. Jennifer was very nervous, shaken up. She didn't want to be in the home alone at all. So she was waiting outside for us. So I understand that you had sensed a spirit in the house. Yeah. And your boyfriend as well? Yeah, we, uh, we've both had experiences. And you were grabbed, is that right? In the basement. Something grabbed my ankle. Sean said that he felt a presence down there too. Well, then I think that we should start the investigation down there. I'll catch up with you all later. There's something here. I want to do some digging. We are at the home of Jennifer Patterson, Warsaw, Indiana. That night, Cheryl, the team sensitive, has a vision of the previous owner who lived in the house. Sometimes I get pictures of people who have been there in the past. Well, this music reminds me of the day we were married. You look absolutely beautiful tonight. Oh, thank you, Eli. It's so nice. Sometimes I get feelings of maybe how the person has passed away. If they are anxious or sad, it gives us an overall picture of what might have been there. Cheryl confirms what Jennifer's coworker told her. After his wife's death, Eli was heartbroken and became a recluse. Later, he died of natural causes in the house alone. The previous owner was very ill. He had some sort of a cancer and it had something to do with his chest. sick and dizzy, and I also felt like I was having a hard time breathing. My chest felt like there was a weight pressing on it. For more haunting, visit DestinationAmerica.com. paranormal investigator has a vision of the man haunting Jennifer and Sean's house. He did not want us there. We were invading his place, his sanctuary.
I could almost see him standing back there. It was more like a shadow, but it was him. Cheryl, are you okay? died here. This is his house. He'll never leave. The previous owner put his sweat and his love into the house. He built the house for his wife. And when he died, he still did not want to leave. He is a so attached to the house. Jennifer. He's still grieving. He lost his wife, the love of his life. He considers you the intruder. The new people that moved in were outsiders. They didn't belong, and he wanted them out. I always thought it was the old man that died there. It's still his house to him. Is there anything that I can do to stay in my home? There's one option, but it's not something that everyone is able to do. At this point, I am willing to try anything. Well, then you're gonna have to try to live in this house together. <sighs> it's possible that if it's not too frightening that they may be able to coexist. That's something that definitely could work for a lot of people. But you can't be afraid. That's the only way that this is going to work. If Jennifer didn't get her fear under control, then he could possibly feed off of that and things could get worse for her. Before the investigators leave, they recite a protection prayer. It sets boundaries for our homeowner and the spirits. It protects the homeowner. And we hope that the protection prayer will at least calm down activity. In the days that follow, Jennifer attempts to live with the grieving ghost of Eli, but her fear is ever present. There's nothing to be afraid of, Jennifer. Nothing. Just doing the laundry. felt two hands on my back push me. The physical attack leaves Jennifer in a state of shock, and she and Sean move out. I got a lot of injuries from that fall. Bruised ribs, pulled muscle. I had strained things in my shoulder. That was the scariest thing that has ever happened in my life. I can't even explain how terrifying it is. And to think that if it can push me, what else can it do to harm us? We packed our stuff and left. Never looked back. To this day, Jennifer still has mixed feelings about her home. With everything that happened, it was still painful to let the house go because I did love the house. It's almost like a trauma. It always, it's always there. No matter how much you try to ignore it or forget, it's always there. It is definitely a horrifying experience. I would say if you don't believe in the paranormal, you definitely need to kind of be more aware of your surroundings because not everything can be proven from a book. Eventually, the farmhouse sells. The house is on the market probably six months, and a couple from out of state bought it. 
I don't want to know if they have experiences or not. I don't care to know anything about that house anymore. <laughs>